Hey, Game Changers, this is Allie. I'm here with Tori. We are out here in Omaha, Nebraska for the NCAA Women's Volleyball Championship. We're really looking forward to the semifinals tonight and the finals on Saturday. This is my personally my first time in a Final Four arena. Um, Allie, what are you what are you most excited for about being here? This is a very unusual semifinal for all of the teams involved. Yeah, it is. Tori, I'm so excited. I've I've been to so many finals and and not to be crass, but some of them have been a little lackluster. And this one has so many first time events that are happening. I am so fired up. So for example, San Diego, being a SoCal girl, having San Diego just be here is incredible, especially upsetting such a veteran like Stanford. That is so huge for me. Absolutely. Those seniors on that team have led this season with heart. Um, they missed out on that number one number one spot earlier in the season because of just lack of schedule in the WCC against veterans of the NCAA tournament like Stanford, like Texas. And they're here in this position, absolutely ready to take on the true vet of this tournament that is in this final four, Texas volleyball. Yes. And Texas, it's, it's funny you mention it because even though they're the veteran here, they've lost every time they've been in the final, you know, and yeah, it, in the last 10 years, they absolutely have. Yeah. It yeah. makes me wonder if, um, you know, nerves get the best of them once they get here, maybe the pressure's too high. And, you know, when you come in as the underdog, even though San Diego has been ranked number one in the region, you come in as that underdog never being here before. There's something about that, that I think you have absolutely nothing to lose. Yeah, absolutely. Texas has something to prove. You know, I think they've been here five times in the last seven years. Mm -hmm. um, they've been to the NCAA semifinals and three of those times they were the runner up of the championship. So they've been here five times since their na last national championship in 2012. And they're definitely hungry for it. But like you said, I think that uh, the underdog of the tournament is probably their biggest fear right now. Uh, San Diego definitely needs to get Texas out of system. They're outsized yep. by this huge Texas team. Um, they yep. have, you know, obviously their leader, Logan, who has been at uh, Texas, has their leader, Logan, who's a senior. She's been, you know, leading the nation five kills per set, averaging in this tournament, hitting over 300 um, percent. Yeah. Their block is absolutely huge. So the biggest thing for San Diego, as it always comes down to in volleyball, in my opinion, is the serve pass game. They have to get yeah. Texas out of system to avoid that oversized uh, net matchup this this semifinal tonight. Oh, yeah, I totally agree with you. But that's not foreign to San Diego. That's exactly how they beat Stanford. You yeah. know, and I think they're fully capable. And if I was on that squad, I'd be so excited, right? They literally have nothing to lose. Um, another thing I'm super stoked for is the ACC. I mean, this is yeah. incredible. You know, Louisville and Pitt coming in again is unreal. The upset of Wisconsin was shocking, I think, to most volleyball fans across the country. But yeah. the ACC has never won. And we're going to have an ACC team in the final, no matter what, with that Louisville Pitt matchup. Yeah, it's so exciting. I completely agree. And those two teams are so familiar against each other. So it's going to be super interesting to see who comes out on top. They've played each other twice this year. Um, you know, they've, they've gone one and one on the season yep. and Pitt has definitely regained momentum after that huge win against Wisconsin. I agree. They look so solid. They look so excited. So many senior leaders across the board on all of these teams, yeah. um, with Pitt, you know, in the six, two and Louisville in the five, one, I think that there's going to be some interesting matchups there as well. Um, and then finally, something that I think you and I are both super passionate about in terms of talking about. On both sides of this semifinal, there are two female coaches. The NCAA has never seen a female head coach win the national championship. And there is a, a very good chance of it with 50% of the head coaches in this national championship being female. Uh, Jennifer yes. Peasley is just an incredible woman. Um, I've looked up to her for a really long time, and I'm so excited for her San Diego team, as well as the Louisville Hug coach. Uh, they deserve this. And I think that if you ask me who I'm pulling for, I'm pulling for not only the underdog, but the underdog of our industry, which is female head coaches. Tori, nobody knows that better than me, babe. <laughs> I got to <laughs> tell you, I am so stoked for both of those women. And I remember being at the final a couple years ago when uh, Mary Wise was in the final. And I got to tell you, it was like, every woman you would pass in the hallway, we would just have that look in our eyes, like, come on, Mary, like, come on, smash that glass ceiling. And this is only the second time in history that we've had two women in, in the semi, you know, and Mary, it was Mary Wise again. 
um, I want to say that was back in 1993, you know, like I was, I was a freshman in high school back then. Don't tell anyone, but <laughs> like, it has been a really long time since this has happened. And you and I both know there are so many in- inequities in our sport. When you look at a women's game, like women's volleyball, the vast majority of high level coaches are men, which, which is it's a little sad sometimes. Um, I am really happy to see NBA, NFL, MLB starting to bring women into their staff. It's just unfortunate that it's so rare. And we don't even blink an eye when when men dominate the coaching front in women's volleyball. So I am pulling for one of those women to get to the final and finally smash that ceiling. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's going to be so fun. Back-to-back matches tonight, streamed on ESPN. Um, I would be remiss if I didn't mention as well, you know, the leader for Louisville right now that they're outside. She's coming off of a 12 game. uh, She missed 12 games this season from a knee injury and she is leading their team in kills in this tournament. So I'm so excited for her. I'm so excited for their team. Um, That feeling of just sort of being on a leash and watching your team they, you know, her team did it. They got them here and now she's back on the court and she's so ready. She's like, finally letting the bull out of the gates and she is ready to dominate. So it's super fun to watch when you have an injury player who gets back right in time uh, to lead their team. And that team was able to build up confidence in her absence to know that they can get here by themselves. Um, And now she's, you know, just taking the bull by the horns and leading them through this tournament. Super exciting. Yeah. Redemption. Um, yeah. You and I both have so much experience with that. You especially, it sounds like a familiar story to me, Tor, but um, I think that when you're out, when you're a high level leader of a team and you're out like that, number one, I think that you're able to almost help coach your team, right? You can teach your team what you see. And of course you are so hungry when you come back. Yeah. Uh, like I am really excited to watch her get fired up as well. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I will see you at the game tonight. Yes, I'm so excited, Tori. We all hope to see you there too, Game Changers. Can't wait to talk to you after the games.